Hello everyone, Raza here. This video is an introduction to the new parse JSON function in Power Apps. Parse JSON allows us to parse data in JSON format, be it simple, complex, or array based JSON objects. We can leverage the output of the parse JSON function and use the dot notation or the index function and more to traverse through our JSON objects. This comes in handy in various scenarios, especially when we are sending array of data back from Power Automate to Power Apps. So let's check it out in action. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It is a text format for storing and transporting data. We now have a new parse JSON function that allows us to pass valid JSON string into untyped objects. An untyped object can hold any data structure, complex or simple. It cannot be used directly and it does require explicit conversion. We can use the dot operator and take advantage of the index function in Power Apps to navigate an untyped object. Power Apps is strongly typed. So if we need to get the data from that untyped object, we would need to ensure that we restore it by leveraging text, value, boolean, table, etc. To get started with parse JSON, head over to settings. Go to upcoming features, search for JSON and ensure that the parse JSON function and untype objects feature is turned on. I will insert a text input control where I would be plugging in my JSON code. And let's just begin with a simple JSON object. There is no IntelliSense in Power Apps around JSON structures. If I open up Visual Studio Code and paste in that JSON object, it's a simple object that has four different properties, name, email, age, and active. Name is of type string, email is of type string, age is a number, and active is a Boolean value. In Power Apps, I have added a label control here. The text for this, let's say I would like to display the name field value from this JSON object. The parse JSON function, which converts a JSON string into an object, my JSON string will come from this text input control. So I will leverage text input control dot text. Now the moment I do this, if you observe the data type that this outputs is an untyped object. So Power Apps is not going to understand the schema of that JSON object. You would need to know the schema of your JSON in order to help Power Apps to traverse through it. So if I need the name property from this JSON object, here if I do dot and type name, it still returns an untyped object. So I need to transform this into its original data type, which is a string. And for that, I can leverage the text function. So I get its value as the output, which is Tom. Let's copy this label and make a change. Let's say I need the email. So I will use dot email. Let's copy this label and change this to age. Now for age, it returns an error because in my JSON, the age field is of type number. So here I will have to type cast it to value in order to have the right data type mapped, which is number. And let's try the active field. This one is of type Boolean. So I will have to ensure that I type cast this to Boolean in order to retrieve its value. Now my JSON object can also be an array. And in this case, I have an array of string values. Let's say in this example, I want to get the text of the second item in this array. 
for my label control, I leverage parse JSON on my text input controls text property, which would return that untyped object. Now, this object is of type array, and arrays in Power Apps need to be typecasted to table. And from this table, I need the item that is at index number two. And for that, we have an index function. So index of this tabular data, the position is two dot value. Once again, it only returns untyped objects using the dot notation and existence of these fields is only verified at runtime. So what we will have to do here is type cast it to its original data type, which in this case is a text. So if I type cast this to text, it will give me the information of the item in index number two, which is BMW. If I change this to one, it will return Ford. If I go to three, it will return Fiat. And if I go outside the bounds of this array, or if I try and point to a specific field that does not exist, it just won't return any value. Now, JSON can also hold an array of objects. Like in this scenario, I have an array that has four objects that have different properties within them. I would like to show the email address field value of the item in this array that is at index two. Parse JSON on my JSON string value. This will return that untyped object, which I know is in the form of an array. So I will type cast this to a table. From this table, I will pick the item at index number two. From here, if I do dot value, I will get to that specific object in this case. And from here, I need the email address field. So I'll point to email. And email is of type string. So I will type cast this to text. And this should return the email address of the second item in this array. If I change this to three, it will give me the email address of the third item in the array, and so on and so forth. Now, another use case is where you would like to represent this JSON data in a gallery. A gallery deals with tabular data and array of items. So let's insert a blank vertical gallery control. And the layout for this, I will pick title, subtitle, and body. The items property for my gallery would be parse JSON from this text input field, typecast this to a table. This will return an array. Within this array, I have these objects. So in my gallery for this title label control, its text property, I will use this item dot value, which is the object dot from this, give me the name. And name is of type string, so I will type cast it to text. Here, I will put the email. And in the last option, I will get the value of the age field. This is of type number, so I'm type casting it using value. So we can clearly see that this gallery now has its data coming in based on a JSON object that we are parsing by leveraging the new parse JSON function. We could also have these complex JSON structures. For example, I have a JSON object that has a field called employees. Within this, I have the array that has the information. So let's try and plug that in into this gallery. So I've plugged in the JSON code here. This time for the items property of my gallery, I will use parse JSON dot employees because employees is that field in my object that has the array of data and I can leverage the table function to type cast it to that specific data type. And from then onwards, my formulas are literally the same. I have this active field that returns true or false. This is of type Boolean in my JSON array. For the items property, I will use filter this data where this record dot value dot active. This will return an untyped object. I have to strongly type this. It's of type Boolean. So let's do that. 
typecaster to boolean is this equal to true if it is only then show that information and we can see how it is filtering this json object to only give me those employees whose active status is set to true and i could change this to let's say false and it will give me the employees whose active status is false and here my objective is to load data in the form of an array but in the form of a strongly typed array rather than that untyped object that i have to keep traversing through so for that you can also leverage the for all function to loop through the array of information that's coming in from this json object so for each of these tabular values let's go ahead and create our objects let's say i want employee name so i'm just creating a field called employee name the value for this would be this record dot value dot name i will have to strongly type it i know that name is of type text so i'll do that put a comma let's say we need the age so i will say age and this would be as follows get the age typecaster to value since it's a number and i will close this object and close my for all function and now if i evaluate this it will give me a table of strongly typed values this i can store in a variable or a collection returning array of data from power automate flows to power apps the standard action which is respond to an app does not support returning array of information however if we were to get an array of data in the form of json which is what flow works in that information i can pass back as a string and now take the advantage of the parse json function to traverse through the array of data so let's take a use case i need to get the members of a sharepoint group in power apps i've created a drop down that has the names of my groups if i pick a specific group and click on get group members this will call my flow which will query sharepoint to get the group members return a json array of objects in the form of a string from flow to power apps and power apps will use parse json to traverse through it so when i say get group members this will return all the group members from this specific sharepoint group i have populated the results in a gallery and i've also populated it in a combo box control which can act like a people picker control only for that specific sharepoint group members help center members this group has only two members so my combo box only loads those two get group members triggers a flow that is connected in my power app the flow triggers from power apps and the parameter that is being passed from power apps to flow is the name of the group i then leverage the sharepoint http rest api action to query my sharepoint site and i am passing the name of the group so that i can get the users who are a part of that sharepoint group the response comes back in json fashion it has a lot of information i only needed two main pieces of information the name of the users in the group and the email address and this entire result set is what i am sending back to power app from flow and this is being returned as type text there is no option here to return arrays so when this button is clicked here is where i am running the connected flow i am passing the name of my sharepoint group as a parameter to flow flow returns a property called response that's the return parameter that i'm passing this response that i get i am leveraging parse json function here to convert it to this untyped object and i'm storing it in a variable this variable is what i'm transforming here to table because i know it returns me an array of data of course it will give me untyped values but in my gallery i can then use that same concept of type casting it back to its original values name is of type string so i used text to get it email is of type string so i used text to retrieve its value in this power app 
the user can take surveys. And I have two different survey types that I've provided, training feedback survey and open enrollment feedback survey. These are dynamic forms that are being created on the fly. And there are templates that are driving these at the back end. For my training feedback form, if I wanted to add another question, so let's say instructor feedback is my question I would like to add to the survey, I can directly make that change in the backend system and the Power App will reflect those changes. Now, since these surveys are dynamically being created, if I was to take one of these surveys and provide my response information and hit submit, this would store the data in my backend data source, which in this case is a SharePoint list. The response of that survey, I am storing it in the form of JSON. And this is what the response looks like. It's an array that has objects. The name of that column, the data is the information that the user entered while filling out the survey. And that information is what I wanted to present in my home screen. For my gallery here, I am using parse JSON. Same concept. Parse, the data is being stored in the form of text in SharePoint. I am retrieving that data, which is in JSON format. I'm using parse JSON. I am tabularizing that data since I know it's an array of information. And from there, all I had to do was traverse through the JSON array. I need the data that the user entered. So I'll point to the data field. It will return untyped object. I know it's of type string, so I will type cast it to text. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.